Hi, and welcome to That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What happened to the Flannan Isles Lightkeepers? Who was responsible for the Gardner Museum heist? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Harry Winston heist. On October 6, 2007, a security guard arrived at Harry Winston, a jeweler in Paris, France, to begin his shift. Security at Harry Winston was tight. Employees were not allowed to bring the keys of the building home. Protocol was to wait outside until the building staff arrived, so the security guard did so. At around 9.50 a.m., Anne-Marie Capdeville, the jeweler's import-export director, arrived and the two entered the building, passing first through the safety vestibule. The security guard dropped his keys off at his workstation and went to the restroom. Capdeville went to her office. Before she knew it, four men armed with bludgeons and handguns barged in. They were dressed as utility workers, as the jeweler had been undergoing some utility work and were wearing balaclavas. The men grabbed Cap Deville by the throat, held her down, and demanded to know how many of her co-workers were in the building. She told them it was just her and one other person. Two of the men went to find the security guard. When they found him in the bathroom, they hit him in the head hard enough to scare him, but not hard enough to knock him out. The two that had stayed with Cap Deville carried her down to the bathroom, tied her up, and left her face down. Not long after, Matthew Briquet, a manager, arrived with two hostesses from Harry Winston. The security guard, along with the two thieves with him, buzzed them in. The thieves grabbed the women by the hair and dragged them down to the bathroom. The thieves frisked the women to be sure they couldn't call for help and tied them up like Cap Deville. The thieves then led Brochet upstairs and ordered him to open the safe. He was unable to do so, telling them to ask sales associate Marie Berenice Belchak instead. One thief then led Berenice to the safe, telling her not to worry because he was nicer than the others. While Berenice was opening the safe, the other thieves were emptying display cases of their rose gold tourbillons. One of the thieves proclaimed Fareed, there's no more time, there's no more time. The thieves took the surveillance tapes, sprayed the employees with tear gas, and left through the back door. It was just about 10.20, 30 minutes after the theft began. Surveillance cameras outside of Harry Winston captured the thieves drive away in a Pugo minivan. None of the 480 pieces stolen during the heist have ever been recovered. The thieves left behind little evidence. Apart from saying the name Fareed, One member called another Voldemort, and the employees also heard the words Zarka and Ak muttered. The thieves didn't leave any fingerprints or DNA behind. Because of how much organization and planning was required to carry out the heist, as well as the lack of evidence left behind, police suspected the Pink Panthers of the theft. The Pink Panthers are a notorious group of diamond thieves, mostly from the Balkans. Between 1995 and 2015, they were estimated to have pulled off close to 400 jewel heists worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The group got their name in 2003. They had hidden a stolen diamond inside a container of face cream. This was taken from the Pink Panther movie series starring Peter Sellers. Pavle Punch Stanomorovic was one of the founders of the Pink Panther Diamond Thieves. When discussing the group, he said, There's no head, there's no end, there's no tail, there's no beginning. You're talking to the it. You're talking to the highest of the highest. You're talking to Oz, the man behind the mirror. It's me. What I did, I was the best. The police also suspected the theft may have been an inside job. The thieves had hidden in a stairwell overnight using a fire extinguisher to remove all evidence of their presence, and the stairwell was equipped with motion detectors that never sounded. Someone must have turned them off. Just before midnight on February 8, 2008, police pulled over Farid Alou for speeding. They searched him and found 40,000 euros in his pocket. He said he got the money from a friend. 
At the time, he was not a suspect of the Harry Winston heist, so police confiscated the money and let him go. Alu had to prove he had legally obtained the money in order to get it back. On December 3rd, 2008, Farid Alu provided the paperwork proving the 40,000 euros was legally obtained. On Thursday, December 4th, 2008, at just about 5.20 p.m., four men wheeling a suitcase were buzzed into Harry Winston. Three of them were dressed as women and were apparently so obvious that shoppers across the street notified police that men dressed in drag had entered Harry Winston. As the hostess was bringing the men upstairs to the sitting rooms, they pulled out weapons, including a hand grenade, and demanded everyone get to the ground. One shouted, nobody move or I smoke you all. Throughout the robbery, the thieves called the employees by name and used their addresses in order to intimidate them. They seemed to have inside knowledge as to what to steal because one thing they stole was a 31 karat diamond solitaire ring that had been delivered just the day before. The ring was worth about $8 million, and after the heist, the media dubbed it Le Grosse Pierre, or the Big Stone. After stealing everything, the thieves threatened to detonate the hand grenade if anyone followed. They left with 297 bijou and 104 watches. Since many of the items stolen didn't have price tags, this is said to be the costliest heist in French history, and it only took 20 minutes. The thieves during the second heist made some mistakes and left behind some evidence. First of all, they spoke. The employees of Harry Winston said the thieves had Slavic accents. They also carried a handbag into Harry Winston, which they left behind. That handbag had fingerprints on it. The thieves in the second heist did not take the surveillance tapes with them, and the tapes implicated one of the security guards. Malud Jenad was not present during the first heist, but he did lock up Harry Winston the night prior to that heist. During the second heist, he seemed to move about the store freely and could have alerted authorities, but didn't do so. Further, Jenad and his girlfriend had been spending a lot of money after the heist. He seemed very suspicious. Jenad was acquainted with a shop owner that sold handbags like the one left behind at Harry Winston. The shop was in the gambling town of Ein Le Ben. This is where the plan for the Harry Winston heist was hatched. Jened had bragged about how lax the security at Harry Winston was. Patrick Chinya said he knew a mob capable of pulling off a heist there. Jened thought he was joking until Chinya introduced him to Duadi Duo Duo Yoi. Duo Duo was friends with Farid Alu. The group had been formed. Following the second heist, Harry Winston's insurer, Lloyds of London, who also happens to be the insurer in the Pink Panthers films, put out a $1 million reward for any information leading to the return of the stolen items. The 222nd tip call provided the names of Duo Duo Yuai and Farid Alu. The police tapped their phones and placed microphones in their cars in hopes they'd hear the pair discussing the theft. Duo Duo and Farid knew their phones were tapped, so they were careful in their communications with each other. However, they did make mentions of percentages and carrots, and once even referred to Le Gros Pierre. Meanwhile, other members of their crew were booking lavish vacations using cash. On June 21, 2009, just over six months after the second heist, Farid went to Duo Duo's home. Duo Duo gave him 49,750 euros in cash. As the exchange was made, police swarmed and arrested the pair. Farid, Duo Duo, Malud Janad, and five others stood trial for the heist in February 2015. Duo Duo was thought to be the brains of the heist. Farid Alu admitted to being one of the men dressed as a woman during the 2008 heist, but he said he had nothing to do with the 2007 heist. Of Alu, the prosecutor said, he was like someone out of an old gangster movie in the way he talked. He took responsibility for his part, but wouldn't rat on the brains. Janed completely confessed his part in the heist. He said that he had deactivated the alarm sensors in the stairwell the night before the 2007 heist. He said he received 50,000 euros for his part in the heist and expressed remorse. He also admitted that if he hadn't been fired, there would have been three or four more robberies. At the trial, his former co-workers wouldn't even look at him. 
Jun Ed received a five-year prison sentence for his part in the heist. Duo Duo received a 15-year sentence for his part. Alu received a 10-year sentence. Of the 881 pieces stolen between the two heists, 493 pieces are still unaccounted for. Le Parisien, one of the finest diamonds to ever be stolen, is still missing. It was said to have been seen on the finger of the ex-wife of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Who were the thieves that weren't caught for the Harry Winston heists? Were the Pink Panthers really involved in the heists? What happened to all those pieces the thieves stole? What do you think? If you're listening on Spotify, scroll down and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.